Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and today I want to talk to you about something that just affects millions of women worldwide, and most importantly, it's something that can crush a woman's spirit, it can crush her confidence, and that can spill over into just so many other areas of life. And so today I'm talking to you about hair loss. I'll tell you, of all the symptoms that women can experience throughout their lifetime, there is nothing quite as bad as hair loss. And over the last six months, many women from around the world have reached out to me regarding this concern. So I felt it was time for us to do a video on this topic and just offer some of my insight. So in today's video, I wanna share a number of things that I see being perpetually overlooked with women suffering with hair loss. I also wanna give you some of the early warning signs uh, should you be aware, that you should be aware of. And if you ignore them down the road, you might be losing lots of hair. I'm also gonna cover some of the most common causes of hair loss. And the thing here is, is that there's no one singular cause of hair loss. It's often many, many metabolic issues going on within the body. So I want to talk to you about what those are. And finally, I want to share with you, and I want to specifically talk to you about a hormone called DHT and the implication that this hormone has on hair loss. You know, last week alone, I saw about a dozen women who had high levels of DHT. And so part of that discussion, part of this discussion that I'm going to be having with you today, sharing with you today, um, is also going to include my top five causes of reasons for hair loss and what those boil down to. So number one, uh, is a poorly functioning liver and gut, or GI system, okay? If you have hair loss, um, this hair loss is often caused or rooted in hormones. An unhealthy liver and an unhealthy gastrointestinal system need some consideration. Everything we breathe, we ingest, we absorb goes through our liver. It's the body's primary detoxifier. And the liver's filtration process literally separates out the nutrients that the body needs for energy and it disposes whatever the body doesn't need or doesn't want. These are going to be things like metabolic waste. These are gonna be things like toxins. These are gonna be things like the metabolites from the breakdown of hormones that the body's already used, okay? So it's very important that you have healthy liver and gut function when it comes to hair loss. Number two uh, is high levels of stress or prolonged bouts of stress, okay? Stress can throw a huge hormonal wrench into your hormone pathways. Stress literally puts your hair growth into a state of hibernation, and it can prevent new growth from actually occurring. Number three is an unhealthy diet, okay? Let's face it, diet affects everything, and if your diet's not spot on, the various nutritional deficiencies are also going to affect the microcirculation of that nutrient delivery to the scalp. But it's also going to have a domino effect on our hormones. So that's number four. Number four is our sex hormones and thyroid hormones. Now I've done a video specifically on thyroid and hair loss, and so if you're interested in that video, I would tell you to go back and watch that. But let me say real quickly that in this video, if, if you haven't watched the video on hair loss, I would definitely suggest that you do that. But if you are experiencing weight gain, brain fog, heart palpitations, depression, anxiety, fatigue, don't settle for just a thyroid screening, which your doctor may have already done with you. They ran a TSH, they ran maybe a T4, and they told you that everything is normal, okay? Get a full thyroid panel done. If you go to my website, you can see the markers that you need to have done, as well as where you want your levels to fall. Okay, so that's enough on the thyroid. But that does bring us to this hormone that I told you I wanted to really talk about, and that's called DHT, or, or dihydrotestosterone. So DHT for short, this is public enemy number one for hair follicles, all right? So let's kind of talk to you a little bit about what this is. What is DHT? Well, if you look at this illustration here, and, and I know this looks confusing, but I want you to stay with me here. On the right side of this diagram, you're gonna see DHT. And what you're gonna notice is that DHT is made when either testosterone, androstenedione, dione or androstenedione diol is converted into this hormone called DHT. Now these three hormones that can all get converted into DHT are all considered androgenic. What that means is that these hormones, once they get converted into DHT or even by themselves, they have the ability to create uh, and, and, and take on the resemblance of male characteristics. As they get converted, they become even more androgenic, meaning they become even more powerful. And this is why women with increased levels of DHT may also develop certain male characteristics. It doesn't mean that you're gonna turn into a, into a man, but you'll become less ladylike, okay? Some of the symptoms you might experience include hair above the lip, you might experience a deepened voice, you might experience acne, you might experience irritability, infertility, you might uh, have cysts on your ovaries, you might notice your breast size decreases by a little bit. 
You might notice that you have irregular cycles. And of course, DHA, DHT is responsible and is the primary cause of male pattern hair loss, like you see in this picture. Now, a woman I just started working with described to me that for the first time in her life, she had noticed that the texture of her hair on her head had changed. Her sex drive was still okay, which made me even more suspicious that she had elevated levels of DHT. Now you see, testosterone is what gives a woman her sex drive and her libido. And if a woman has plenty of these male sex hormones, we wouldn't necessarily expect to see that her libido changes. But based on many of these hormonal symptoms that she was experiencing, when our test came back, it's exactly what I expected. Her DHE levels were elevated, her androstenedione dione levels were elevated. So my point here is pay attention to your body. Now I don't want you to, I don't want to turn you into a hypochondriac with all the things we're going to be talking about today, but you do need to be familiar with, with your body and what it's trying to tell you, okay? So these subtle symptoms could be red flags that you have elevated DHT levels. And these again could be the early signs uh, that will give you a chance to be proactive rather than calling my office when your hair is coming out in clumps and you're in tears and the stress of hair loss is perpetuating your problems. So let's unpack this DHT just a little bit more for you. All right, so if you look at this illustration, you can see that when hair follicles are exposed to excessive DHT for a long enough period of time, the follicle begins to produce less and less hair. Now, each successive growth rate or shedding cycle results in the production of finer and finer hairs. And so eventually, the longer this process goes on, eventually what happens is the hair is never able to break through the surface of the skin, and it looks like a very thin, sparse, pattern, okay? And as well as the obviously the follicles go dormant. So what do you do when this happens? Well, remember what I said in the beginning of this video. There are five main reasons or five main areas that really need to be investigated. It's not just about running a test that look that looks at DHT and if it's elevated, but rather understanding all of the hormones that are also part of this metabolic imbalance and how they also play a role. Whenever you deal with hormones, you need to understand more than just why they are high or low, but again, looking at the big picture. So in closing points, there's a couple things I want you to take away from today's video. Number one is that hair loss has many causes. Today we mostly talked about the hormone DHT, but realize that hormones exist in a state of mutual balance. There are many other hormones such as T3 and T4, hormones made by your thyroid, which are hormones made by your thyroid gland. There are hormones made by your adrenal glands, specifically cortisol and DHEA, those can be off. And then there's obviously the health of the liver and health of the GI tract to just name a few other systems you need to be concerned about. Now, if you've exhausted all of these areas, DHT should be on your radar if it's not already and it hasn't already been tested. Again, think about this as being public enemy number one. Number two, if you do find an elevated DHT, the typical treatment is using something known as a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. These are, there are other natural means that I would explore long before I ever resorted to these medications. These med medications like Finistride have just a long list of unwanted side effects that often come with them. So this may not be your best option. Number three, there are natural 5-alpha reductase inhibitors out there, okay? So these are things like saw palmetto. And I will tell you that there's quite a bit of research behind saw palmetto. Um, it can be used in men, it can be used in women, but again, saw palmetto acts on an enzyme that prevents the conversion of androstenedione, dione, androstenedione diol, and testosterone into DHT, and that's really what you're looking to block. Now, how long does it take to grow your hair back? That's probably the question you've been wondering since I started this video. Well, again, it all depends on what's going on inside your body, and that's really the most important thing. We're all so different. Medications will not make your hair grow back if you ignore the other causes that we've talked about in today's video. But again, so how long does it take? Well, I have patients that have started seeing a difference in about four months, and I have other patients that, based on their problems, their thyroid problems, their stress hormones, their gut, their liver, some of those cases can take up to 10 to 12 months before hair loss really not only comes to a standstill, but before those, site, before those, uh, those follicles start to reawaken and come out of dormancy. It just depends on the individual. So whatever you do, give it time and be realistic. Not every case of hair loss is the same. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found value in it. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you do that. Uh, also, if you visit our website, you're gonna find over a thousand pages of articles, videos, recipes, dedicated to natural medicine and better hormone health, okay? So until next time, take care.